Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again and today. A concerning uh, piece of news here um, from Ukrainska Pravda taken from Politico and it says that uh, Politico sources say front line in Ukraine might collapse if Russia goes on offensive. So here is the, the article. It is from Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. So political, source, political sources say front line in Ukraine might collapse if Russia goes on offensive. I personally am very skeptical that this article uh, published by Politico is uh, intended to inform us, uh, rather shape our opinion and act in order to have uh, these guys um, send more weapons, you know, that about $60 billion worth of weapons to Ukraine, put public pressure on our elected officials, which is right now the House uh, in Washington, D.C. They will send the, the money, they will send the weapons, probably not in the uh, $60 billion form, probably going to say, well, we're going to send 55 or 50 billion because we negotiated, but they will nevertheless send it. So let's see what evidence political sources bring or are allowed to bring on the table here to inform us about the possibility of Ukraine frontline collapsing. So let's go. There is a high risk that the front line will collapse if Russian forces launch a new offensive this summer. Senior Ukrainian military sources have told Politico on condition of anonymity. I love when that uh, when the media uses um, on condition of anonymity or uh, people familiar with the issue. Can I use the same justification to break a news here? Can I use the same? Can you? No, that's called, you know, miss this or this, that. Uh, but somehow these uh, accredited um, media outlets can use that. We know they uh, spin certain things, right? Or some of them straight uh, don't tell us uh, how things really are. Nevertheless, they are entitled to use these anonymous sources or people familiar with uh, the issue told us under the condition of anonymity. I always dislike this kind of thing. But anyway, I understand the confidentiality and the risks associated with, uh, you know, putting your uh, um, name over there and say, hey, I work for, I don't know, the Pentagon and I tell you this. Well, well, well. Nevertheless, uh, we cannot verify if that's true or not because we can't ask directly the sources. Therefore, these guys can say basically what the fuck ever they want. So... They said Ukraine is in need of drones, howitzers, and hundreds of thousands of shells and missiles. They will come. Don't worry. Source, senior Ukrainian of officers speaking to political on condition of anonymity. Well, I could have told you that too, but hey, what do you want? Um, the fact that Politico publishes this kind of article and Ukrainska Pravda takes it and gives it to us tells me that the order probably was given, allowed to, hey, publish this for the baboons. They need to uh, um, put pressure on their elected officials. And I'm quoting, according to high-ranking Ukrainian military officers who served under General Valery Zaluzny, the commander-in-chief of Ukraine's armed forces, until he was replaced in February, the military picture is grim. The officers said there's a risk, a great risk, of the front line collapsing wherever wherever Russian generals, general, general, generals decide to focus their offensive. Moreover, thanks to a much great weight in number and the guided aerial bombs that have been smashing Ukrainian position for weeks now, Russia will likely be able to, and I'm quoting, penetrate the front line and to crash it in some parts. They don't tell us, obviously, where, because it would be uh, confidential, but still, this piece of information is should be confidential. You don't tell the enemy that uh, we're about to collapse if you attack us. <laughs> where would you say that? But anyway, details. One senior military source claimed that, and I'm quoting, 
nothing that can help Ukraine now because there are no serious technologies able to compensate Ukraine for the large mass of troops Russia is likely to hurl at us. We don't have those technologies and the West doesn't have them as well in sufficient numbers. Uh, I think this is just a uh, block when I say we don't have those technologies is because the Russians accused NATO of providing Ukraine with uh, technology in order to hit way deep inside of Russia, which happened yesterday, the, that refinery about what, 800 kilometers inside Russia and that uh, not only refinery, but supposedly a Shahed drone manufacturing company. And uh, the Russians said the Ukrainians um, don't have the technology uh, and they don't have the tracking system. They can't do it. <laughs> and uh, obviously the Ukrainians right now say, no, we have them. I read an article a minute ago with the Ukrainians claiming, yeah, our technology is top notch. Okay, well, how come you got these big leaps in what, two years? Really? But hey, the baboons will believe it. The source believes only Ukrainian resilience and endurance, as well as mistakes by the Russian command can change the grim dynamics. Senior Ukrainian officers also stressed that relying on Russian mistakes is not a strategy and they bitterly recalled the errors that they said undermined the Ukrainian resistance from the very start, mistakes made by both the West and Ukraine. They also spoke ill of Western foot dragging and quote, arguing that supplies and weapon systems arrived too late and in insufficient quantities to make a difference if they could have. One officer said as Zaluzny named it the war of one chance, end quote. Political, political pointed out that it now depends on where Russia decides to focus its forces in the offensive, which is expected to begin this summer. And I'm quoting, in the pre-offensive pummeling, stretching from Kharkiv to Sumy in the north to Odessa in the south, Russia's missile and drone strikes have widely surged in recent weeks, targeting infrastructure and making it hard to guess where it will mount its major push, end quote. Zelensky came out I read an article and he said that the Russians used uh, in uh, March 400 missiles and about 600 drones. 400 missiles in one month and 600 drones. So they still have them, I guess, right? It says, says here that we need howitzers and shells, hundreds of thousands of shells and rockets. So yeah, Americans go and uh, give them. Their source estimated that Ukraine needs 4 million shells and 2 million UAVs. <laughs> To attack what? Poland? The officers stress that they also need many, many more soldiers. It's okay, France will send you their soldiers. Political reported that Ukraine currently does not have enough troops on the front line, which exacerbates the problem of insufficient Western support. In addition, the sources say that Ukraine is currently facing not only a military crisis, but also a political one. They emphasize that while Ukraine is avoiding major conscription, Russia is now gathering resources and will be ready to launch a big attack around August and maybe sooner. And quote, he says that the Russians conscripted 100,000 uh, this uh, so far this year, but as for, uh, that the twice a year Russian uh, conscription they have, I think in the, in the spring and in the, on the fall, they conscript 150,000 in the spring, 150,000 in fall. I don't know what exactly what it is, September or something like that. And they already got 100,000 soldiers who, on top of the 100 that will uh, have, will be uh, mandated. These supposedly are troops that just volunteered because of the Crocus uh, concert hall attack, according to Shoigu, I think. I read that on Sputnik. So let me show you where, uh, just to have an... Uh, uh, idea of where this could happen, so uh, where the uh, offensive could happen. So the Sumy is right here, Sumy Oblast. This is the Chernihiv, Chernigov, right here. I don't think that will happen, anything over there. They don't have troops in, in uh, enough troops in Belarus. So Sumy, Kharkiv, 
and then they, this is the front line uh, the contact line that uh, if the Russians supposedly um, yeah okay if the Russians uh, decide to start an offensive they could possibly break through well we'll see um, I think this article was made was put together in order to uh, form shape public's opinion in such a way that people will get angry like send that money god damn it those guys are losing their man this these republicans in the senate uh, they already did their job in the in the house well i think the decision over there was already um, made which is the money will come and um, they try to push the european i think to squeeze the europeans and the nato to pick up some of the tab and uh, after that they will come with uh you know like like the white knight coming at the fight uh, you know after he like remember that uh, movie uh what's his name troy with brad pitt i mentioned that movie before uh when he's just uh tired mm -mm 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 -mm, doing that and eventually he showed up in the battlefield and he fucks everybody up so i think that's gonna be United of america these guys are writing scripts this is hollywood for the baboons because the baboons watch movies, too many of them, and then they see real life, really, man, yeah, man, that's Rambo, right now, came with his knife. That's uh, how the United States will appear late at the uh, front line and will save the day. Put it up. I mean, that's a clear Hollywood script. But nevertheless, it doesn't mean it, it couldn't happen or it never happened before, but I think these guys are very well organized. And uh, Politico is just... Uh, trying to uh, aggravate the baboons scares oh my god we have to they're losing can you hear it? these guys are anonymous it's okay we trust them anyway i mean where do i pay the taxes oh i don't work oh my bad <laughs> all right thank you very much for being with me again today Ooh. stay strong stay smart look for the truth and be just